Welcome to Differential Equations, Chapter 1, Section 1. So in this problem set, we actually have an object falling. So we're trying to find the total force acted on it and the maximum velocity it will have. So we know that F equals MA, that is a given equation. So we're actually going to derive this. So we'll leave the left side the same, and we know, um, so we just look at this MA. So we know acceleration is actually the derivative of velocity. So we can actually put this down, so F equals M times dv dt. Remember dv dt means the derivative of velocity with respect to time, so we're taking the derivative of velocity, which is the same thing as um, acceleration. So we can we know F is equal to that, and we know the total forces, so we're going to try to find what F is. We know the total forces is F, so we can say it's mg minus gamma v. So mg is the mass times the gravity acceleration. The gamma is the coefficient for um, wind resistance, and then the v is the velocity of such. So we can actually plug that back in for m or for f. So that's going to go to mg minus gamma v is equal to m times dv dt. So we're actually trying to fall, solve for dv dt because we're trying to find the maximum um, velocity. So we're going to divide by m on this side. So this will actually go to dv dt is equal to g minus gamma v over m. And so we actually have some constants here. So we know that the mass is 10 kilograms. We know that gamma is 2 kilograms per second. Um, keep in mind this unit is actually really weird because we have the gamma, or not gamma, velocity in meters per second, and the total force has to be in meters times kilograms times, or divided by seconds squared. So it just comes out to a weird unit. So we'll actually plug these in for all of such. And, and by the way, g is um, 9.8 meters per second squared. Just to get that done. So we've got dv dt is going to be equal to 9.8 minus, and we've got gamma, so that's 2v, because v is what we're trying to solve for, and then m is 10. We'll actually simplify this a little more. dv dt is going to be equal to 9.8 minus v over 5. So this is our differential equation that we're trying to solve. We will eventually solve that in the next section, but what we can do right now is we can actually create a slope field or a direction field um, called both, both terms, and we can see where the function is going as time goes on. So we notice that we have the function v as going to t, so we'll actually make a graph here. So we're gonna have velocity on the y-axis and then t because as time goes on. So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna actually set this equal to zero. So we're gonna have zero is equal to 9.8 minus v over 5. So we have v over 5 is equal to 9.8 and then v is going to be equal to, let me get a calculator up here just a bit, 9.8 times 5 is going to be 49. Okay, so v is 49. So what this means is the, the horizontal line here is going to be at 49 because that's when the slope is zero. So remember, the derivative of something is actually the slope. So we're graphing v, and we know there's going to be a horizontal line at v is equal to 49. So now we're just trying to find the slope when the it's above it and when it's below it and as time goes on. 
So we're actually going to plug in values. So um, we can't really find as time goes on because we have no t in this function. So we're going to try to find, we're going to plug in values for v. So we should try something that's above 49 and something that's below 49. We should also check if it increases or decreases as it gets closer to this value. So um, we can try something really easy. So let's say, what if v is equal to 50? So we're going to have dv dt is equal to 9.8 minus 50 over 5. Well, we actually know that's going to be negative because 50 over 5 is 10, so it's going to be negative 0.2. So let's go quite a bit above that, and we'll actually try v is equal to 100. And we've got dv dt is going to be equal to 9.8 minus 100 over 5. This is actually going to be 20. So that's going to be negative 10.2. And so this gets more negative, so it's going to be more steep of a slope. So we can say that this has a large negative slope, and it slowly decreases. And we can do this throughout all of the t function, so all of, throughout all of the t um, from left to right. Um, because we don't have any t in our differential equation. So I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of this. Okay, so next up we're going to test for what's below that. I'm kind of running out of space here, so I'll just try to conserve some in a bit. So let's say v is equal to um, try to get an easy number here, 40. Hopefully that works out well. Okay, so we're going to have dv dt is equal to 9.8 minus 40 over 5. 40 over 5 is 8, so we're going to have 1.8. So what if we have v is equal to 0? Once again, apologize, it's kind of getting cramped dv dt is going to be equal to 9.8 minus 0 over 5, which equals 9.8. So we notice that this is actually smaller than this. So as v is decreasing, the derivative is actually increasing. So we notice that this number is actually much larger than this number. So it means it's flattening out as the v gets greater. So we will have large slopes in the bottom. and it will slowly be getting flatter. And so now we have our completed slope field. And what this means is all values of v are eventually going to hit 49. So that's going to be 49 meters per second, um, just based off of all of these units. Oops, can't see that. Based off of all of these stated units, and we can say that this is actually a stable solution, or an equilibrium solution, um, because both sides go to this value.